Hello everyone, my name is Bing Jun Wang. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Cisco. In today's video, I'll be demonstrating how to deploy a Cisco KLS9800 virtual wireless controller on Microsoft Azure. With the Cisco KLS9800 CL that has already been offered on AWS and GCP, Cisco has recently released the KLS9800 CL on Microsoft Azure Marketplace. The features and scales are similar with AWS and GCP, which supports at maximum of 6,000 APs and 64,000 clients on a single instance through the Microsoft Azure Management VPN connection. N plus one high availability is supported and APs are in flex connect with local switching. In addition to that, all APs supported in 17.7.1 are supported with Catless 9800 CL on Microsoft Azure, including the newest Catalyst 9136 Wi-Fi 6E AP. There are many advantages for Catalyst 9800 CL on public cloud, which including agility, scalability, global footprint, and cost efficiency. In the aspect of agility, it only takes a few minutes to spawn a Catalyst 9800 CL instance in Azure it makes it easy to quickly launch one or more wireless controller and terminate when it's done. In the aspect of scalability, there are no physical limits in the public cloud, so new instances can be added as the requirements of additional APs and clients increase. In the aspect of global footprint, it is more about latency, security, and private policies. The public cloud providers have a global footprint so from any location that AP installed can reach a 9800 CL in the cloud with a lower latency. Some of the deployments have a restricted security policy that user data and traffic need to stay within the region. The public cloud providers have a data center in every geographical region for your deployment to make it happen. Last but not least, cost efficiency. First of all, it takes $0 to launch a Catalyst 900 CL on Microsoft Azure. It reduces data center footprint and infrastructure costs. Shifting from a CapEx model to an OpEx model where you will get billed as you utilize the resources. Now let's talk about what is actually available on the Azure Marketplace. There are two options available for 900 CL deployment. One is Azure Virtual Machine and the other one is Azure Application. If you're deploying with Azure Virtual Machine, you will be provided with maximum flexibility and customization. It will just like deploying any other VM images through the Azure Marketplace. If you're deploying with Azure Application, you will be provided with a pre-produced templates that will make the deployment easy by selecting through the template. Here is an example topology of Catalyst 900 CL deployment on Azure. As we can see on the outside, a resource group is created that contains all the resources for this deployment. A virtual network and a subnet is created for the VM to be attached. A network security group is created to give inbound rules and outbound rules for the VM. And a management VPN is created for traffic transmitted between Azure virtual network with the corporate network. Finally, a Kalis 900 CL is created in the virtual subnet for managing the APs which are in the corporate network through the management VPN. Now, let's talk about the workflow and then go into Azure portal to build up the deployment. First, we are going to create a resource group. Second, we are going to create virtual networks. After that, we are going to create a network security group. And then we are going to create a managed VPN. Finally, we are going to launch the C9800 CL virtual machine. Now let's go to the Azure portal and configure the resource group. On the top search bar, search for resource groups. Click on the search result. Click on create. Give it a name. Change the region to the current region. Click on Review and Create, and then Create. Now the new resource group has been created. Now let's go to configure the virtual networks. 
search for virtual networks, click on the result, create, select the resource group and give it a name, click on next, change the address space and the subnet as we uh, what we want. and then click on security. Make sure all in default, click on review and create, and then create. Now let's go configure the security group. Search for network security group. Click on the result, click on create. Select the resource group, and then give it a name. Click on Review and Create. And Create. Now let's go inside the Network Security Group to configure the inbound rules. Select the inbound rules and click on add. Here are the ports and protocols we are normally using for the WLCs. In this demo, we are going to add UDP 5246, 5247 for the CAPWAP, and then SEMP, and then HTTPS. So let's add the first security rule. Click on service tag. Change that to 5246. Click on UDP. Change the name to CapWeb1. Click on Add. And now we can see the first rule has been added. Let's jump to the place that all other four rules have been added. Now we have complete the security group configuration. Let's jump back to the home page and then configure the virtual network gateway. On the top search bar, search for Virtual Network Gateway. Click on the Create. Give it a name. In the Virtual Network, select the, our network. Create a new public IP and give it a name. Select the Availability Zone to 1. Click on Review and Create. And then Create. After the deployment is done, let's go to configure the local network gateway. Click on the result. Click on create. Select the resource group and give it a name. Enter the public IP address for your on-prem router and add your on-prem router subnets. Click on Advance, click on Review and Create. Click on Create. When that is finished, let's go back to the home page and add a connection. Go to Virtual Network Gateway. Click on the Gateway. Click on Connections, click on Add. Give it a name. Change the connection type to Site to Site. Choose the local network gateway we just created and give a pre shared key. Click on OK. Click on the connection. Click on Download Configuration. I'm using a Cisco ISR rotor, so I'm choosing Cisco ISR and choose ZACAP2. Click on Download Configuration. And here is the file you got for the configuration on your rotor. 
write all the configuration on the file to your rotor and then go back to the Azure portal. Now we can see our connection has been changed to connected and the 10.100 slash 16 has added to the routing table. Now let's go to the marketplace and deploy a controller virtual machine. Search for catalyst and choose the image with the virtual machine. Select the resource group and give the virtual machine a name. In this demo, we are going to use password authentication type, add a username and password, and then confirm the password. Click on this. We are going to leave this at default and click on networking. Make sure the VM is set in the right virtual network and subnet. And we can also add a public IP address for the web GUI access. And we choose the network security group to the one we just created and click on management. Choose enable with Cosmos storage account, add a new storage account, and click on advance. In the custom data, we can add bootstrap configurations here. In this case, we are adding a new user as username, admin with password Cisco. Click on tags and click on review and create. And then click on create. It usually takes about five minutes for the VM to be deployed. Let's jump to the place when it's done. Now the deployment is done. Let's go back to the home page. Go to virtual machines. Click on the VM. And we can see our controller is now up and running. And we can access the web UI from the public IP address and also the private IP address. Now let's open up a web browser, enter the private IP address for the virtual machine. In the login page, let's log in with the user credentials I created in the Bootstrap configuration and click on login. In the day zero configuration, we add NTP server. Click on add. Click on next. This page is to add a WLAN, but it's also great to do this configuration in day one configuration. Click on next. It's important to configure the AP certificates. So choose the signature algorithm to SHA-256. Enter a password and also add the AP user credentials for access the AP console. Click on summary and click on finish. It will redirect to the login page once the day zero configuration has been successfully applied. Let's re-login. And we can see we have the main dashboard access and the WC is ready for AP2 on board. Now let's head back to Azure portal and deploy another WC with Azure application. Before the deployment, we need to have another subnet for the new WC. In this case, the 10.100.2.0 24 has been configured for the new WC. Let's go to the marketplace and click on create for the Azure application image. For this type of deployment, we need an empty resource group. So we give a name for the new resource group and click on OK. Give a name to this virtual machine. Give it a username. And 
password. And then confirm the password. Click on next. This diagnostic storage account name has conflict with the other one, so we need to change the name. Click on OK. If we have custom data, we can click Yes and upload the file. In this case, we just click No. And we need to choose the virtual network and subnet for the controller. We select the network and subnet for the application. Click on Review and Create. And then Create. Let's wait for the deployment to be done. Now the deployment is done. Let's go back to the home page. Click on virtual machines. We can see another WC has been deployed. Click on the WC. Here they show is deployed on the network 10.0.2.0 and with a public IP address. Let's open up a browser, enter the private IP address, and click on continue. Now we can log in with our username and password. And then the day zero configuration will be the same as the previous WLC. Here concludes our video. Thanks for watching.